Yeah. <sighs> Cracking open a nice fresh can of PepsiCo and Code Red Mountain Dew. As always, Pepsi is my favorite soda brand. And if you would like to sponsor the channel, Pepsi, I am open to you guys doing that. So, let me take a sip of this real quick. Oh, man. And now let's discuss what we're doing. So... This is actually something really cool about OBS that I haven't been taking advantage of entirely. But you can hit this button right here to start or stop streaming. Right now I'm streaming, so it would be stop streaming. Right below it, as you can see here, it says start recording. Um, so I can do both at the same time from my understanding. Just a quick little test right here. Uh, right now both of them say stop so right now this is recording what's going on on the screen plus what's coming through my audio which is really awesome so what i can do is because a lot of what i the trouble that i have with um reviewing guns because i still have to finish the 2017 reviews uh, a lot of that comes down to how much like actually goes into um everything that's going on right here so now that I can hit start recording, I'm going to be doing like a whole live review for all the rest of the 2017 models, which will become its own standalone video. And then if you, um, you don't want to watch each and every single video independently, you can come here for the live um, whole version of it as well. So um, with this whole live version of the review as well, we're of course going to be having chat off to the side. So it's definitely possible that um, if you guys are watching and reviewing with it, you guys uh, obviously go into chat. So let's hit the start recording button and see where we go from here. So welcome back to a, another gun review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Glock 26. Uh, this is the remastered version. I've actually made this gun in real life, except not the remastered version. I made the other version of this. Uh, known as whenever it decides to pop up, Google Drive is a little slow considering there's 14 gigabytes worth of data on it as of right now. Uh, Glock 26 set 10698 only. This is a real life gun that I made out of um, set 10698 only. I didn't use any outside pieces other than obviously rubber bands, but other than that, um, all of it was from. The inside of that set so this is what we got out of it this uh, was a super basic pistol it had a working trigger and then a working slide that opened uh, and that was that was it for uh, the Glock 26 um, original now then the remastered version takes that design and it upgrades it and makes it look a lot more fluent and uh, well designed so excuse me uh, hopefully we have these separated into groups so we can take a look at them um, starting out we have this lower frame uh, which still retains the upside down design that the original frame uses um, but instead improves upon how these um, front end looks up here so it's um, instead of having studs on the side it's now been shortened down uh, to this and it also allows for the recoil spring to go on the inside so uh, that's still there the entire grip itself has been hollowed out and kind of reinforced along the edges right here to allow for a magazine uh, to slide in and out. It's a pretty basic magazine for now. Uh, you can see this little spot right here is for the actual magazine release. Uh, like I said, it's just a basic magazine, but it gets the job done. This utilizes the Christopher Hopman style of magazine release. You push on the button here. And it comes out here. This circle stud is where one of the rubber bands goes and this circle stud over here is where the other part of the rubber band goes and that uh, kind of forces the magazine release to stay pushed out basically. Uh, this improves upon the trigger design. The other one had a working trigger but it was not a automatic resetting trigger. This one includes an automatic resetting trigger uh, with it. Just a little bit of some improved um, overall fluidity throughout the model I guess is a good way to say it in the sense that uh, everything's kind of buttoned up a lot more it looks a lot nicer 
uh, going forward. Uh, and then up here, of course, we have our um, slide, uh, which does in fact work. So you can slide this back a total of four studs. This exposes the magazine, which is actually right here. So if we grab this, we can pull it out. And you can see all the way down to the bottom. You can even see where the uh, magazine release um, kind of sticks into where the magazine is at. You can see the other part of the grip. And then this opens up into the chamber, which uh, is where the rubber band would be held on right here and at the back of the gun right here. Um, that is where your rubber band would go, uh, unless you have one of the super complicated designs where the spring wraps over the guide rod, which is definitely possible. Uh, the guide rod is exposed and it does sit um, in this area, which is a really nice, just small detail. And the barrel is exposed as well. As for our slide release, it just old style hinge piece with a weird um, two by three modified plate just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, it just sits right up there just like that and that would impede the travel of the slide and lock it back. Put it down, put the mag or yeah and then everything goes back forward and we're back to where we originally started with the Glock 26 remastered. So this is a pretty basic pistol. It was nice and easy and simple and overall I'm really happy that I was able to make this design out of really basic Legos and then improve upon it uh, inside of LVD itself with things that I would actually use. Here's the site picture, pretty basic sites. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to come right and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. See you guys later in another YouTube video. And then I can hit start recording and it stops and that should save as its own independent video that I can go back to later on. Uh, so this will also serve as kind of like a behind the scenes videos. Uh, we will download this. Oh wait, do I have a, yeah, I don't have a red one rendered. So we'll just um, download that image itself and that will serve as the thumbnail for that as well. So now we back out, uh, right here is the next model. We're just going in alphabetical order basically. So we have the H and K G36. Um, which one is the newest one? It's not that one. I think it's this one. Yeah, that seems about right. So let's download this because we'll be using that as our thumbnail. This is stock etched version number one. Download this as well. And then we can go ahead and open this inside of LVD itself. And we can start another review video. whenever it decides to load. We'll take another drink of Pepsi while we wait. Not Pepsi, I don't drink Pepsi. Girlfriend drinks Pepsi. Mountain Dew Code Red. All right. And now we break out OBS. <sighs> okay, take a breath, get everything ready. Hi, welcome back to another Lego gun review. Uh, once again, we're going through all of the 2017 Lego gun models that we have. And right now we have the HK G36. Uh, this is the second version of the G36 that I've made. So this makes this the official Mark II version. Uh, this is actually modeled after Ash's. Ash? Yes, Ash's G36 from Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, so there's a couple different changes. They're very small aesthetic changes from the original G36, but uh, the original G36 that I made uh, is the base for this design, and then this took it to a whole nother level. Um, kind of inspired by Christopher Hopman's G36 in a number of different places and a couple other um, gun builders around, um, in particular um, Extreme Lego Guns or I believe it's Caro's Lego Creations now, not entirely sure. Um, 
Alan's Custom Lego, uh, which I think he also goes by another different YouTube name now. They're, they're all uh, worthy of credit because a lot of the stuff that they incorporated into the, their design is something that I incorporated in my design. So here it is in all of its wondrous glory. I'm really happy with a lot of uh, the way that this... Oh, crap. Ah! All right. Thank you, guys. Are they? I didn't really realize that they were bigger than uh, minifig scale, to be honest with you. I'll reply to that a different time. Anyhow, uh, wherever. I really like how this looks. It looks fantastic. I think it would be overall just perfect uh, to hold in the hands and things like that. So uh, there's a lot of work that went into this, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, here we have a four stud wide stock. Um, I wanted to kind of keep it four stud because I don't think it would be three stud. Four stud just makes a lot more sense. We used a different style of attaching it to the actual um, gun itself so that when it folds, it can um, stick out in just a slight little ways because of uh, how everything over here, there's some side detailings and things like that going on um, that would require it to stick out itself. Uh, the actual uh, method to get it to fold is pretty simple. You just push on this button right here, which unlocks it from uh, the main body, which is this darker gray tab right here, and then it would obviously fold over. I don't think it's going to want to try at all from the looks of it. Um, yeah, so what we can do is, in essence, cheat, take and actually flip these over, and the stock will become disconnected from the main gun. Obviously, that gray piece that you see there would um, retain, follow the, the gun itself, but the stock would rotate on over. Let's just kind of take and uh, put these out by one just to get the general gist of it down. Just like that. And then it would fold over. It wouldn't fold over perfectly, which is why you were having some of those issues because uh, LDD tends to be a little difficult like that. But it would fold to right about there is where it would stop. Uh, so, of course, you're... Um, fire selector is still capable of being reached from here, also from this side because it's an ambidextrous fire selector. Your uh, brass deflector and shell ejection port are still left open so that you could still use the gun even with the stock folded. Uh, there is nothing on the gun itself to lock the stock in this position um, on my model. Obviously in real life there is, uh, so that part um, is not on my gun. So that just folds back on out. Like so, locks into position, some small detailing going on here, not a lot. Uh, most of it's just um, small, like refined bow slopes uh, that keep things nice and smooth on your cheek when you're using it. Uh, going into the upper receiver up here, most of this is pretty simple. It's just a block of uh, four wide or Lego bricks. So it's four studs wide in most places. Um, a couple, my older model, this was a lot worse of a transition. Um, I figured out the new way to do stuff like this. So this is a lot better of a transition nowadays. It's a lot smoother and actually goes flush with the rest of the body. Looks really good. Uh, cheese slopes, angled brackets to kind of bring this angle down uh, where the charging handle goes. The charging handle does rotate from side to side, uh, but it does not auto go back to the center. Uh, that uh, is something that I did not do on this model, so that is not possible. Um, your fire selector, like I said before, is ambidextrous still. Um, it does rotate up and down. Uh, of course, I have to get the, I have to click on the pin. So if we just very quickly hide this. So if we want to put it on safe, it would go up like so. Uh, semi and then full auto pretty basic stuff. Um, with the new pieces though, I was able to kind of smooth this off so it looks a lot nicer of a fire selector now. 
as opposed to being kind of like big, ugly, has studs on it as well. Uh, the grip is where we get a lot uh, more interesting. Uh, this grip is actually one stud wide. Um, right, right there is the one stud. And then there's a couple different plates on the side to build it up. And then we used bow slopes um, to get this really nice curve to it going on. Can we see it? You can kind of see here. To get a really nice curve to it. Um, so it feels really comfortable in the hand. It's really skinny. It's not like big, fat, four stud wide. It goes up into a four stud wide. The back end of it's two stud wide. Um, but then, like I said, it goes into the bow slopes. Uh, which just barely peek out of three studs wide. This is three studs down here at the bottom, and you can see there's a little bit over here and a little bit over here as well. Um, so this would be like a just slightly larger three stud wide, uh, but nice long skinny grip. It uh, would feel really, really good in the hand. This is held in uh, by actually a um, Technic pin right here, which goes through pretty much the whole length of the, the body of the grip. Um, this is held in to a one stud wide trigger guard, uh, which comes up to our magazine well up here. A brick built trigger instead of a, an old style uh, Technic trigger. A flapper style magazine release with a um, really awesome, uh, this is actually, believe it or not, a four, uh, um, Am I crazy? Oh, yeah, okay. This is a, I'm sorry. This is a three stud wide magazine with a two stud wide section here to get the groove and then a three stud wide front as well with a four stud wide bottom plate and then some smaller side details here um, that are represented by, uh, from Ash in game. Oh, great. That's too much of a pain. Uh, this goes into a almost four stud wide, just a little bit wider than four stud wide um, magwell. Uh, this kind of just gets held on by a whole bunch of uh, plates on the side, uh, which then comes up into a bullet up on top of the magazine, which is two stud wide, uh, right underneath where your uh, top of the bolt is traveling at, so uh, that you can unchamber. You can pull the magazine out. Uh, which is locked in to the back back here up underneath this little section right there uh, and then drop your magazine put a new one in and reload obviously for the front end it's a little bit more complicated uh, this took after Christopher Hopman's um, this is actually set up on you can kind of see it back here these Technic pieces right here are set up so that you can get a nice angle on actual plates that are on their side uh, that have cheese slopes on the bottom. So you have this really nice looking shape going on up here. Uh, three stood wide tactical rail, three stood wide tactical rail, only two stood wide. Uh, this is the one thing that I think I would change about the model and something that I could have sworn I was going to do, but I must have forgotten to do. Um, but this is what we got. As you just probably saw from this view, the barrel does go all the way down. This is actually the front of the bolt right here. So there is uh, the possibility of actually having a chamber down there. That's not a detail that I added, uh, but it is possible to have down there. Uh, and the muzzle brake at the front here. And that's pretty much it for the HK G36 Mark II. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I wonder if I did update that and it's simply a different model. Yeah, I wonder. Not entirely sure. Hope you guys have a fantastic day though. Thanks so much for watching. More comment right down, subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I will see you guys later in another YouTube video. Boom. All right, another review down, and we've got another 45-ish minutes. So let's try to kick it into uh, ultimate overdrive, as Plankton would say. This one should be pretty simple. This is for Mute, I believe. Mute's the one with the MP5K. 
Yeah, because Smoke has the FMG9. Yeah, there we go. Using our heads. Logic. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this up. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mutes HK MP5K. So this is from the game Rainbow Six Siege. So if it doesn't look like any standard MP5K that you're used to, it's because it's modeled after the one inside of Rainbow Six Siege. This is a pretty basic model. Uh, this is just a basic modification to my standard MP5-esque uh, weapons. There's only a couple things new uh, to this one, so it's uh, it's pretty easy actually to go over. Back here we have the MP5K PDW style stock. Um, so if you ever see something like MP5K PDW, chances are it has this style of stock to it, uh, is what it looks like. Benin's Inzens Verletten. 112, hello, welcome to a live review of Mutes MP5K from Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, this stock is pretty basic. It's a six stud wide cap here with into a four stud wide um, base with a three stud wide bottom here that goes back into a four stud wide base. Um, this is a pretty basic uh, rotation here. Um, this is a whole bunch of stuff to get this to work the way that I needed it to work um, and then uh, get held into place and yeah, it's just, this is an absolute mess worth of studs over here. Uh, but the cool thing about this is, is that this uses this piece here, uh, which can actually, uh, it rotates around the outside of the gun itself. Uh, and it simply locks over in place over here with this piece. So if we were to take this off, we could rotate the stock then a full, um, should be able to go all the way. Why are you not? A full uh, round over, um, which still, of course, that is a nice and small um, stock. This is actually where it connects into the back of the uh, receiver itself um, using Tendic. Uh, so this uh, rotates all the way over. Uh, this leaves the shell ejection port open, so you could still use it. This also leaves all your controls open on this side and as well as this side because it's an ambidextrous gun. Uh, and then, of course, you just rotate the stock back over and then it grabs onto the piece and locks into place. In real life, I don't expect that this would be the best of ways to lock it, but uh, this is what I had going on with uh, this gun uh, at the time of building it. So this is what we went with. This has my standard um, h &K drum sights on it uh, that I've used, guys seen before. Actually, in the most recent G3 Swordfish build, this is the same type of sights that I was using on it. Pretty basic. Those are mounted to a 3 stood by tactical rail on top of the gun itself. And the front sight is a pretty standard mp5k front sight i did cut down um, from the um, arch piece into just plates up here to make it look better pretty basic um, charging handle up here uh, pull it back locks up into place only goes back um, about four studs worth uh, maybe five uh, this is connected to the charging uh, or the shell ejection port so once you charge the weapon lock it up this gets locked back as well for a brand system on the inside pull it back forward when you hk slap it most of this receiver down here is four studs except for the grip which actually is three studs and then uh, actually has this flaring to it uh, which most recently i've decided looks really bad but for the brevity of the video this model does retain that it does include the working finger grooves uh, this model also has the working safety you can see here uh, this part is actually the safety uh, so while on safe it blocks the trigger firing uh, you cannot pull this forward because it runs into the safety flip it off of safe and you'll be able to pull the trigger the trigger guard is actually made out of technic so you don't have to worry about it falling apart too much uh, and it locks up into right about here um, for the gun itself this is a flapper style of mp5 uh, magazine release the magazine itself goes into a um, five stud wide body so you can fit a three stud wide magazine which slims down into the two stud and you can see here this is the top of uh, where the magazine locks into place onto the bottom of the gun you can see up here this is actually the bolt um, so the uh, magazine does sit right beneath the bolt um, so you are able to see it um, right down here in the gun itself which is just a nice little touch and then the front end has a basic MP5K uh, front end. So most of it includes the uh, front foregrip, 
uh, and then followed by these little things that uh, block your fingers from flying in front of the incredibly short muzzle on the end of this weapon itself. And that will be it for our Mutes HK MP5K from Rainbow Six Siege. This is a Master Edition weapon, of course, um, and I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I really like uh, just MP5s in general are kind of like one of my favorite things to build out of Legos because they're just kind of easy. Uh, they're all like the same pattern of weapon. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, come rate and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I'll see you guys later in another YouTube video. Thanks so much for watching. And then we hit stop recording and the recording stops. And now we can continue on to a another gun. So what comes after an MP5K is the Hellcat PDW, which we never finished. So we don't have to actually review that. We can, however, go over the Hornet Assault Rifle. Uh, we need the rendered image, please, thank you. Uh, and then followed by the right here. Hello, the Eraser. Welcome to a live review of all 2017's models up until about uh, 2 o'clock. Maybe 2.30 if it takes me a little bit longer, because we are we still got... Oh yeah, no, there's too much here for... <laughs> there's way too much here for us to go over in the amount of time that I have, so... We will... Do our best, but I don't think we're going to do it. The Challenge Guys, hello. All right. Hi, welcome back again to another Lego gun review of another 2017 Lego gun model. Uh, this is the Hornet Assault Rifle from Quicksilver Industries. The Eraser, thank you so much for your compliment. I appreciate it. Uh, this is another futuristic gun design um, from uh, famed gun designer, I guess if you want to call him that, uh, Wouter Kroon. I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. Uh, he's better known on DeviantArt as Shockwave 9001. Uh, so this is kind of a futuristic take on a, um, it's supposed to be fully ambidextrous AK uh, design. I actually didn't um, design it correctly, and we will go over that when we get there. So for now, let's take a look at the stock. This is a fully adjustable stock uh, in the sense that you can there's actually supposed to be this piece on the side over here, but that probably was one of the things that didn't load in. Uh, you can push on this lever right here and it will drag this piece down on top of, uh, this piece is um, a piece that slides in, to, in between um, some grooves, kind of like a standard M4 buffer tube, because this is on a standard M4 buffer tube. Uh, and then you can adjust it in and out as you see fit. Um, now then, there's a whole bunch of detailing going on in here. There's a crap ton of stud transitions. You can see there's one studs, two studs. Uh, this is all sideways um, building up through here, uh, followed into two studs back here into a four stud wide butt pad. And then uh, you get into kind of like six stud wide territory up here, but not entirely. It just kind of depends on where you're at. Um, there's some jumper plates used back here to get all the grooves and stuff in here. Uh, and it's just, it's a lot. Uh, going on, but it looks really, really nice, and it follows the overall pattern of the stock that um, Shockwave used in his design. This is also a folding design, so if you take and you push uh, this piece forward, um, it will unlock this whole section right here, and I don't think, yeah, this piece isn't physically attached to the buffer tube, so I can't actually show it folding, uh, but it's pretty basic. It just folds across this entire pin right here over to the side of the receiver on this side. This is a pretty standard AK buffer or AK um, top cover, dust cover, uh, except uh, this is where I messed up. This is supposed to actually be open on the other side over here, not uh, where the safety would be, but um, where another shell ejection port would be. Uh, and the bolt is supposed to be able to eject out of that side as well. I unfortunately messed up on that. I did not catch that in time while I was building the gun, so that did not uh, make it as a feature into this gun. So that is a fault of mine and not uh, the builder. Uh, that's five stud wide dust cover into a four stud wide receiver uh, into a um, three stud wide of hillable magazine well. This was really complicated to do and a lot of work, especially to get this nice fluent angle going up here. And you can see it actually involved using um, some wing pieces down here. And this it was a lot of work to get done, but it worked out really well. 
play come down into a four stud wide grip, uh, followed by two stud wide trigger uh, guard and one stud wide trigger. Uh, the magazine release has been painted red, so it's nice and bright so people can see it. Uh, the magazine would come right up in here, nice and basic, uh, standard AK magazine from what I understand. Uh, that would be it. Uh, standard AK um, slight sliding adjusting sights, these just sit here and you move back and forth to increase or decrease the angle. There's actually supposed to be a lipstick piece here, and that I can see is not here, uh, so we can fix that really quickly. And then we get our um, standard sights, which is pretty basic, look something just like that, uh, followed by the ring around the sight as well. Me too, my man. Uh, up front here, we have a custom-made handguard. This was really fun to make specifically because of all of these right here. This was a nice challenge uh, to get those to fit in and look great. Uh, this has a um, three-stud wide or three-stud wide rail, uh, three-sided rail system as well. So one rail, two rail, three rail, all three-stud wide. You could put an optic up here and put your lights up here. Uh, there is no bottom rail, so that is not included. Uh, then we get into kind of one of my favorite areas. We actually get to the muzzle brake and the barrel gas port. Uh, all of these have some really crazy stud transitions going on that make them overall really nice. So we have a two stud wide barrel uh, into a plate built um, kind of like sideways upside down building for where we connect to our gas block. Our gas block is connected by a one stud wide area back into a two stud wide area, which has also got plate built on it plus the site. And then we get into our muzzle brake area, which bumps out to um, uh, four studs, basically, is what this tire usually is. It's kind of a little bit less, but four studs is usually a good measurement. And then these are, in fact, three stud for uh, this portion of the muzzle brake, which uh, looks really nice. And then down here, we have the one stud wide cleaning rod that goes through a majority worth of the gun um, so that you can clean the barrel out in the field without having to lose it. This was a really fun rifle to make. I love doing Quicksilver Industries guns. It's just really hard because it takes a lot of detail work. Uh, so this is one of those, and I really like uh, how this is. And before my desktop glitched out, I actually had a picture of the collection of these that I have as its background. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to come right and subscribe for more than another YouTube video at another date. And I will see you guys later in another YouTube video. Boom, that's another video down, and now we can move into doing a, another one. So the HVK-30, which was a very long gun to make. It took ages to make the HVK-30. There is so much detail work that went into doing the HVK-30. And to be completely honest with you guys, a majority of uh, all of my... Black Ops 3 weapons are really detailed, like the Locust is really detailed, the Elkar is really detailed, um, obviously the HVK-30 here is fantastically detailed, I think out of all of them this is the most detailed uh, other than the Locust. The Dingo, even uh, with it being unfinished, was pr pretty set on its way to being really, really detailed as well, so yeah, there are a lot of these stuff is really, really well detailed. Let me get a better comfortable position going on here uh, before we start this review. And then we will start it and then continue on about our review stages. Hey guys, welcome again to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the HVK-30 from Black Ops 3. This model took a incredibly long time to complete. It took a large amount of patience. There is a lot of fantastic detail going on here, and a lot of it is just stuff that can't be appreciated um, until you, you really get down into the nitty gritty of a lot of um, different stud transitions going on here. Uh, the only thing missing is, of course, the iron sights. <laughs> At some points, it just gets really annoying to have to do iron sights and stuff, so... Uh, iron sights are missing from this. So let's just go ahead and go over it from the best we can. Uh, here we have our stock. This is a pretty basic stock, uh, four star wide, back into another four star wide area with a slight little bit of plates built up around it. We have two studs wide down here. A lot of detail going on through here. 
Uh, then we get into a five stud wide part right here before we go back into four stud. Uh, and then you can see that this actually comes back into another uh, four stud wide part right here, which comes in on two stud wide. Uh, from the two stud wide, you get back into four stud. It goes back and forth between four and two for quite some time down uh, throughout this area until you get to the grip. The grip itself is three studs wide. The trigger guard itself is one stud wide. The trigger is one stud wide. I tried to retain a lot of the detail that went into the actual trigger itself. Floppy CD drive, hello. Welcome to stream. Uh, we go in back into a four stud wide lower receiver, and then the magazine well is just slightly bigger than four studs wide. You can see part of the actual magazine well sticking out itself. There is a lot of detail that went into actually trying to accomplish uh, this part of the gun itself um, uh, before it, back here it's four studs wide, up here it slims down to being three studs wide. The magazine itself is actually um, three studs wide. Those two pieces should stick onto this piece. That's kind of weird. Uh, I did not. So if you have more information about that, that'd be nice. Uh, and then we get up into a five stud wide receiver, which has, again, uh, just a crap ton of detail going on uh, with everything that's going on here before we get into a three stud wide upper rail section where the iron sights would usually be. We have a working dust cover over here. It's just a really basic design. Uh, it's just, it's meant primarily for the looks, not really for the functionality. It just folds flat up against the receiver like so, and then can unfold uh, whenever you feel like it. Uh, there is no actual magazine release uh, because I don't really know exactly which part would be the magazine release. When you go to reload the gun in game, you kind of push this area right here. So I'm kind of thinking that this black detail is the actual magazine release itself, but I'm not entirely sure. So I did not uh, include it into in this gun. Uh, for the safety, it's pretty basic. It's just this little switch, uh, safe fire, safe fire. Uh, like I said, pretty basic right there. Uh, the charging handle is up here. This was a fantastic design. I actually built this upside down to be able to do this right here. These are cheese wedges that are flipped upside down on top of one another. It was a really cool thing to be able to do. Uh, then we got a nice shape to it in the back here as well. You can pull this. This is, um, I believe it's independently attached um, because this is upside down and this isn't uh, from the bolt. And you can pull it back. But the point is, you can pull this back. The bolt comes back with it as well. When you get to the handguard, most of this is actually six studs wide right through um, this area right here. So this is six studs wide. This is six studs wide, this is four studs wide, and then the inside of this is actually made using um, sideways building. You can see this uh, piece right here is the he uh, brick that holds things on the side. Uh, and then all of this is actually plate technique here to make this fantastic circle uh, for the handguard itself. Um, and on the inside here, you can actually see your exposed barrel and the exposed gas block as well. Uh, muzzle brake is pretty basic. There's actually a piece here that's not colored pro appropriately. You should probably fix that. Uh, and then, of course, gas adjuster when you're running a suppressor and some sonic ammo and things like that. Three stud red wheel on the bottom. It's kind of interesting because they went for this design on bottom, but for the top design, they went with the flat design. So it's really interesting. And then, of course, uh, simply because it really needed to be done, I forget where to click. I think it might be here. Yep, there we go. But you can, in fact, open uh, this design right here. Why is it not? It opens a lot further than that. This, yeah, this should open a lot further than this. Oh, maybe it's because I need to grab the right piece. There we go. So we use this side as an example. Uh, but your sides open up here. Um, so that I guess the barrel could vent. So whenever you go to reload, um, these always open up. So this is possible on this gun. This was uh, something that I wanted to do as an automatic feature and was not able to figure out. So I just did kind of like a manual feature. You In real life, you would have to reach in and pull them out to do the animation itself. But it is nice to know that it is possible for them to do that. And that basically ends the HVK-30 from Black Ops 3. There is a lot of time that went into actually making this model itself. There's a lot of stud transitions. There's a lot of detail going on. 
Um, so I just, I really appreciate a like button on this one because, uh, like I said, there's a lot of start transitions going into this one uh, that made this a pain in the ass to build. So, uh, yeah, if you guys like it, go ahead and like the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to come rate and subscribe on another YouTube video some other time. I will see you guys later. Peace. Almost hit the stop streaming button. Do not want to stop streaming. Got to continue on this grind. We got through the HVK30. What comes afterwards? The Irio Mote Assault Rifle. I could have sworn, by the way, that I did all of these. Now that I'm like really thinking about it, I really think I did some of these. Because if I did some of these, then I've done all these reviews for, like, no reason. <laughs> Which would not not be fun at all. Um, this is where we stopped. Oh, yeah, see, look. Oh, damn it. I got up to the model of 1911. I literally just wasted 40 minutes doing videos that I've already done. Oh. Crap. So we got up to 1911. Oh wait, that's fine. I knew I had already done these. I don't know why I didn't check sooner. We got already down to here. Dang it. Uh, let's just go with this one then. And we'll continue on. I only got 20 minutes left, but I wasted so much time. Oh, damn. That sucks. Alrighty then, let's uh, review this. Alright. Hey guys, me again, and I made of uh, blundered just a little bit and started reviewing things that didn't technically need to be reviewed, but we're back with actually new guns this time instead of old guns that are being reviewed. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AUG A3. Now then this, I saved the actual text file with his name in it to give him credit. It's right up here. I'm going to try my absolute best, but there's a little sheiks over some of the letters, so I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, and I really apologize if I'm not saying it right. I mean, no disrespect. This is Mate Halasanai's AUG A3. Um, this is something that I think I found from Flickr, uh, and there was an LDD file, so I downloaded it, and um, I have it available with me. Uh, this is something that in the future I'd actually really like to... Um, edit down just a little bit more. I've already made some modifications to this model, but I want to make some more um, to turn it into um, a kind of like AUG H bar, AUG A3 hybrid almost. So um, I only made a, a little, very few modifications to this, to be completely honest. Um, I think a lot of it came down to just small detail work. Um, so um, yeah. I'll, there's really not a lot to say about this because I, I really don't remember what modifications I made and what were his. Um, but credit goes to him uh, for this model because this is a fantastic model. Like I said, in the future, look forward to more stuff coming from this. I kind of want to modify the uh, Magwell to see the three star wide magazine. Uh, I'd really like to do an H bar magazine in it as well. Um, just to have like a AUG A3 LMG, almost. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's about it. I really don't remember a lot of what I actually did to this. I think I did most of it on stream, so I think it would be possible to look back at stream and figure out what I actually did to it, but I, I really don't remember too much, uh, unfortunately. So like I said before, this is Mate Hasanai's AUG A3. Um, so credit goes to him because this is a lot of his work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to come right and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. See you guys later in another YouTube video some other time. That was like a three minute video. I cannot believe I screwed up so badly to start reviewing guns that I've already reviewed. I really can't believe that. Oh god, that's so frustrating. On a whole nother level of being frustrated. Why is there two versions of this?
Why? Why? I'm just going to download this image because laziness. And because time is a thing. Oh, I see. Because this one has the magazine in it. Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Monitor PDW from Quicksilver Industries, all made by uh, Shockwave9001, as he's known on DeviantArt. If you'd like to see more of his more concept guns from the future, go ahead and check him out on DeviantArt.com. This is a PDW. It was a really, really cool model to make. A lot of this is um, ambidextrous. This uh, so much work that went into making this ambidextrous uh, in itself. So. Uh, there's also a lot of stud transitions going on, so uh, bear with me as we go through this. So as you can see down here on the bottom, we have a five stud wide base uh, with plates that bump it up to a six stud wide um, upper receiver here. Uh, this is a stick six stud wide butt pad on the back just to make it nice, squishy, big, nice and soft. Uh, here is the magazine release. This is an ambidextrous design. On this side, it is a push uh, button um, and it will uh, pull out this lever right here, which will drop the magazine. And on this side, it's just like an AR-15. You push, and this pops out and drops the magazine. Magazine is seven studs long by three studs wide. Standard AR-15 magazine. We should be able to... Uh, that's weird. Should have been able to take it completely out of the gun. Uh, but there's a piece missing right here. So let's fix that. Then take it out of the gun. Yep, there we go. So this is a uh, standard 5.56 magazine, AR-15 magazine. You can see uh, locks in the place over here, and then we have an AR-15 5.56 by 45 round sitting up top here. Uh, this sits right underneath where the bolt would be. So if we kind of come through and hide away some of this, you can see it's right where the bolt would be. You can also see some of the chamber of the barrel right through here, which goes all the way through the gun itself. We have our first shell ejection port on this side. And on the other side, we have our closed off shell ejection port. So this is a really cool design that I came up with for my different usernames gun. Basically, um, you can just take off this rubber cap, flip it on around to the other side, like so. And then this side is open for the other uh, side. Um, it's really simple. Uh, this, these pieces are just all held together, but there's no um, bricks underneath it um, right through here. So you can just pull these down and then go to the other side and push them up. There's a brass deflector on either side just to keep brass off of you. And then you can also see this bolt catch right here, which was super hard to make ambidextrous, but it's super nice as well. So this is pretty simple. Uh, once you pull the bolt back, you can push this in. It will um, proceed to block the travel of the bolt any farther forward. On this side, uh, basically the same thing. You can just... Um, Pull the bolt back, push this up um, or uh, to the side, and then on the other side, you know, push it in. So they basically undo uh, the same thing the other one does. Uh, these are my different usernames, AAC Honey Badger sites that have been slightly modified. So you have uh, pistol sites, and then when they flip up, you get uh, rifle sites. Pretty basic. They sit atop a three stud wide rail, uh, which sits atop a slanted upper receiver. I used this design uh, in particular just so I could get the vent details going on through here because there's four circle vents and I wanted to use the actual like circles. I didn't want to use any of the, the smaller um, Technic pinhole stuff. We have an ambidextrous charging handle uh, right here which is connected to the bolt. Pretty basic. It just sticks out on both sides. Like I said, connected to the bolt. Uh, and then we have an ambidextrous fire selector here. It slides back and forth. Uh, right now it's on full. Right here would be semi and right here would be safe. Uh, it's on both sides. It's just on a slider. Push back forth however you feel. A four stud wide grip with a three stud wide front just for detail into a two stud wide trigger guard uh, with a brick built trigger and a three stud rail on bottom. Three stud rail on all the sides and then small little muzzle brake on the front end. This is another really cool gun. I really like the look of this. It's like an updated um, TAR-21, TAVOR-21, um, XM-15, I think is what their new ones are. I don't know, it got really complicated. You can basically see the entire back end right here is um, inspired by a TAVOR 
uh, and then the, kind of like this area right through here. But then a lot of this is redesigned to be more ambidextrous than the Devoris. So that's pretty much it for this video, though. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, comment to and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I'll see you guys later in another YouTube video some other time. Oh. All right, let's get another one, another few out of the way so we got more stuff to upload tonight. So, um, have I not done those? I could have sworn I viewed that already. It's right here. Huh. Interesting. Okay, um, yeah, so I don't think we've done it. So this one isn't the base. This is the, I've downloaded and opened this yesterday. This should have the grenade launcher attached to it. Yes, it does. So we don't want that. We actually want the one below it, uh, which was this one. Crap, I had a version 2, and I do not see it here, so that's not good. So let's download both of those. We'll go with the gray one so that it matches the thumbnail. Interesting. Alright, well, we'll just roll with it. Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MP5A3 GL Mark III. So that's a lot going on right now, but basically this is the standard MP5A3 that I've had. The A3 simply means that it has the retracting stock that you see here, or the adjusting stock that you see here. It's really basic. There's not much really going on other than that for the A3 nomenclature, and A2 has the uh, fixed stock. Uh, this has a custom rail built up on top of it simply because rails are awesome uh, and then it retains most of the other functions that my other mp5s um, have as well three stood by magazine magazine release trigger working safety and um, adjusting stock with the charging handle and bolt and you can lock the charging handle into this little groove right here and that's it for the sake of time and because we've already gone over the mp5 a whole bunch of other times the only addition to this model is this right here this is really cool this is something that i saw in a book this is an actual grenade launcher that h and k made for their mp5s that i had never seen before until i saw it in a book um, so basically um, how this works is you would press a lever somewhere i don't know where the actual lever is and it would open up your tube your tube would slide forward to um, somewhere right about there. You would then load in your grenade. Uh, for here, it'd be a two-stood by grenade simply because of the space constraints. Uh, you would slam it back this way, uh, like you were. This is made on rails, as you can see here. You would flip this lever from safety to fire, and then you'd pull the trigger and you'd launch a grenade. Um, so this is a really crazy concept to think about. Um, honestly, like, I grenade launcher in an mp5 is just crazy it was a small grenade i think they only ever used it for like flares and smoke grenades i don't think they ever used it to launch high explosives uh for say um but it's just something really cool it's a piece of h and k history i never knew that they had actually built something like this um and just kind of mounts over your handguard this is a standard handguard underneath here it was just a really crazy thing that I saw in the book, and I really, it's an official picture by H&K, so I just really wanted to bake this, and this was what came out of it. So, uh, like I said, pretty basic design. You just, this slides forward, uh, forward and back on these rails. You would open it, you'd float in your grenade, you close it, you launch it, and then you would extract and things like that. So pretty basic MP5 A3 uh, GL Mark III Master Edition. So that'll be it. For this guy. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember comment and subscribe for more videos. Some of this one I'll see you guys later in another YouTube video. And thank you. All right, let's do one more. Uh, PP93 SMG. Yes. Oh man, is this a rough model? Wow. What what the heck is going? 
I mean, I'm going to review it anyways. We'll download this um, because I don't have a rendered image of it. Uh, stock was etched. We do have an etched version, though, which uh, basically means that it's colored appropriately. So let's take a look at it. And this will be the last gun that we do of the day before I head off to work. Um, why did I make this? Is a good question, but I remember the answer to it. So, yes. All right, good enough. I've oriented myself with the rest of the model, and we can discuss it now. Hi guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PP90 FP. Oh man, I almost had that. I screwed up that intro. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PP93 SMG. This is a Russian SMG. It's a strange SMG, and that's the entire reason that I wanted to actually build it. So there's a lot of kind of experimental test designs going on in this model that I wanted to see if they would work or not. And some of them did, some of them did not. Uh, and then a lot of the kind of like weird features that this gun has itself, we can go over as well. Uh, just a quick note, this is a stockless uh, gun. As of right now, uh, there is actually a stock uh, that goes into this pin and this pin here, and it folds over the top of the gun like most things that are Russian and folding. Uh, I did not make that yet. Uh, that will be a later project at a later time. Um, but other than that, this is a pretty basic submachine gun. Um, you have your magazine here. You can pull it out. I never finished making the magazine, apparently. Uh, so this would go up into the whole pistol grip of the gun. It locks in the place where uh, you see this right here. Um, you simply push on this and this would move over to the side, uh, which would um, drop the magazine out of the gun. Uh, this grip is one of the experiments. This actually uses uh, this piece here uh, to make the angle as well as this vent piece uh, placed right here. Uh, that's part of the experiment. Uh, it worked pretty okay. Um, and then this is a, just a forced and wide grip. A little bit of sloping going on to make it a little bit more comfortable. A little bit of some detail going on. To a two stud wide trigger guard. This trigger guard was a lot of work to kind of get looking the way it did. But I think overall it matches the shape really well. One stud wide trigger. Pretty basic. This is actually the safety. Uh, I believe this is safe. And I believe that... Uh, crap. I believe that, come on, uh, going up with it is a um, their fire mode, um, so they're like full auto or semi-auto, maybe it's full auto only, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there's just a little bit of detail going on in the brown back here. Shell ejection port is right here, pretty basic, um, and then a lot of you might be wondering actually where the... Um, charging handle is. This is what drew me to originally making this gun uh, because it has a really, really interesting charging handle. This part right here is actually the charging handle. You pull or you push on these two um, ends right here and you just draw back and that is the actual charging handle itself. It's not a reciprocating charging handle of course, uh, which means it's just detached from the bolt itself. Um, I just really thought that that was really interesting about this gun so that's the reason I made it. Thank you guys so much for watching though. This was a pretty basic gun, real simple. A lot of kind of smaller techniques going on back here to get everything sideways and whatnot, but it was pretty basic. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment rate, and subscribe for more videos. Some of this one, I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. All right, I think we can fit one more in if we're just really, really fast with it. And then we have the Remington R4C. We're not gonna be fast with this one at all uh, because yeah, Ash's gun is... I put a lot of heart and soul into this one. So let's get it. Hi right, guys, welcome back to another uh, LEGO gun review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ash's Remington R4C from Rainbow Six Siege. This was a really complicated gun to build and I'm really happy with this overall. So, yes, this is before, before anyone says or asks, this is before I built the Divinity Edition um, AR-15. So, 
I was not using that receiver. I was using a different receiver. This has the standard info buffer tube though into a really, really nice stock. I really like how this stock turned out. There's a lot of different angles going on through here using a lot of different methods, upside down bricks, sideways bricks, things like that. It's really basic. You have your adjustment lever here. You just pull up on it. Uh, it drops down. You'll be able to adjust it back and forth where these grooves fill in. Um, it's pretty basic. It gets to six studs wide at some points, four studs wide and others, two points and others. Uh, nice rounded up on top for nice and comfortable for your cheek. Um, the actual receiver itself is a pretty basic um, AR-15 receiver that I've done on a quite a few different models. This one's been uh, modified just slightly to incorporate a couple different um, design aspects to its um, ambidextrous fire selector on both sides. It's on safe right now. It could go to semi and then full auto. You have your Four stood by grip here. This was a really fun grip to design. I really like how this looks because it looks just like the grip in game. Uh, basic trigger up here, uh, brick built. Uh, bolt release right here. Uh, magazine release on this side with the fence uh, just to make it look really nice. Uh, we have a three stood by magazine. Um, oh, I didn't even finish building the magazine. Oh my gosh, this is a really bad problem I've had. I don't finish building things for some reason. Uh, yeah, it's a three stud wide magazine up into a two stud wide with a five, five, six round on top. You can actually see this right below where the bolt is. Uh, dust cover, fold back up, brass deflector, forward assist. Um, forward assist does not work. You can pull on the charging handle here. It is separated from the bolt itself, so you can uh, lock the bolt backwards with the um, bolt catch. Push the charging handle forward just like you can any real AR-15. A three stud wide tactical rail up top with ashes and iron sights, which are really, really cool. These were super fun to try to design. Uh, this is the best design that I was able to do. Then we get into the octagonal um, handguard down here. This was a really interesting design that actually incorporated the use of this piece right here. Under God, hello. Um, it was really, really interesting to try to design around and really, really fun. Uh, and overall, it, I think it worked out really, really well. You can see how I got the shape of the grip or uh, of the handguard itself. It's really wide, but I think it would feel really good. Kevin Riddell, hello as well. You have a three stud wide rail on bottom and both sides. The barrel is all the way down the length of the, um, the gun itself. Um, overall, I don't think the end of the handguard would be supported all too well. I think we would need another one of these down here, but for the sake of aesthetics, I decided to leave that off on the base model of Ashes R4C. That's pretty much it though. So I'll uh, see you guys later in another YouTube video some other time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I'll see you guys later in another video. And boom. All right, so that is that. That is everything that we have to worry about from uh, this current stream. Uh, while everyone is here, I'll show you guys the h and k g3 swordfish i completed yesterday i think it looks absolutely fantastic uh, of course i'm the one who made it so i'm gonna usually think that way so while i'm that's loading i'm gonna put my shoes on so i can go back to work uh, i've got a, another 30 minute drive ahead of me to go back to work it's gonna be kind of interesting to go in and Again. Uh, but yeah, so that was my first live review of actual models from uh, from 2017. I really screwed up at the beginning of that, uh, doing models that I've already reviewed and that I knew I had already reviewed. I was sitting there thinking about it, saying, you know, a lot of what I'm saying sounds so familiar. It's like deja vu. Why do I feel like I've already done this before? And then it's, of course, because I've already done it before. I really screwed the pooch on that one. Uh, so anyhow, what you're looking at on screen right now is the H&K G3 Swordfish. And this is, um, I don't really think it'd be classified as a G3. Um, I say that because this uh, the base gun itself is the AR-33 which is um, modeled after the H&K 93. <laughs> yeah, it, 
a little confusing. Well, I guess the HK33 is a thing too, but I believe it's more modeled after the 93, uh, which is a 556 variant of the gun itself. So the G3 is 7.62 by 51, I think, uh, which is a much larger cartridge than 556. So the magazine in this gun right now is seven studs long, and I think the magazine in most G3s would probably be between eight and nine studs long um, in that nice little sweet spot. So I think this I would still have to consider to be uh, an AR-93 or a, I'm sorry, AR-33 or HK-93, uh, simply because this would have to, I'd have to upscale the magazine uh, and the magazine well to a much larger magazine to uh, retain the G3 nomenclature that I've already given to this gun. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to do that because I think I'm done with this model. I think this model looks fantastic how it is right now. So I don't want to touch any more of it. So for now, uh, this is the parting view that I will be giving you guys because, like I said, I am going back to work. <sighs> yeah, I got to gotta make that money unfortunately you know, living is nigh uh, too easy nowadays so this is the swordfish it's custom uh, which is the excuse that I'll be using to get away with uh, the whole 556 uh, caliber cartridge it, 556 would be more attainable anyways uh, i would have to be a proprietary magazine and then of course you know it's nice and easy to get your hands on a demilitarized H and K. Well, even a set me, you could get your hands on a set me nice and easy because set me's came first, by the way. H and K did not make the roller delayed blowback weapons. Set me did. A Spanish company did. Believe it or not. <laughs> your guns look amazing. I couldn't even dream of making that nice of a replica. I really appreciate that. Thank you. This is the parting gift that I'm giving you guys, though. So if you've stuck around all stream and you've listened to me do my reviews, and then you're going to watch my reviews later, hopefully, fingers crossed. You don't have to, of course, if you've already watched them. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, so with that said, I will see you guys later, um, maybe tonight. See you guys later. Goodbye. I clicked on the wrong thing. That's awkward.